has around 7% of the world's known lichen diversity, with approximately 2,000 species, 1,600 of which you can find here in Scotland. And the amazing thing about lichens is you don't have to go to a tropical rainforest or to the Scottish Highlands or even the far west coast. You can go on a lichen safari right here in Edinburgh. And once you start looking for them, you find they really are everywhere. So myself and the rest of the lichenology team at the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh are going to introduce you to a few of our top Edinburgh lichens. But first, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to what a lichen is. Lichens live on a substrate from which they take nothing at all. They're comprised of a fungal partner. This forms the main body of the lichen, the home as it were and produces chemicals which protect the lichen from things like UV rays. In the fungus lives a photobiont, which photosynthesizes, producing sugars, which the fungus then harvests. This relationship enables both partners to live in places that they wouldn't be able to otherwise. I'm Chris Ellis. I'm the head of Cryptscan section at the uh, Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. Today, I'm on Winnie Hill, opposite Arthur's Seat, to show you special lichen on the rocks. This is Rhizocarpum geographicum. These vivid green patches on, the, on this, uh, this outcrop here. If you look closely at the lichen, it's got a mottled surface. It's got these, these uh, very green areas with little black speckles in between, which are the, uh, the fruits. That gives it its name, the, the map lichen. It looks like the, the surface of a, of a map. We found it here growing on, on basalt. It will normally grow on hard rock, but acid rock and um, in particular in cold climates. That gives you a clue as to its superpower. It's an extreme survivor. There was a European Space Agency experiment that, that sent this lichen into space in a capsule. They uh, opened the capsule and the lichen was exposed to um, zero gravity and radiation in space for 14 days. They brought it back down to Earth and when they, they opened the capsule, they found that it was um, still thriving. So from the tops of the highest mountains, from the Arctic to Antarctica and from Edinburgh into space. Hi, I'm Becky and I'm going to tell you about a little lichen that I like here in the city. It's called Calipaca citrina. It's this orange powdery stuff. It might not look like much from a distance, but I think one of the interesting things is but we're standing here with cars going in and we're right in the middle of the city. It looks like a boring old wall, but all of these little splotches of color tell us there's lichens right here in the middle of the city. And this little orange one has a really neat story behind it because that one, we used to think it was one species, but actually there are at least four. One of the early giveaways about the diversity in this fungus is that it has different colors. So I said it's mustardy yellow. That one is particularly mustardy yellow, but sometimes when it turns that egg yolk yellow, like cooked scrambled eggs, then that could be one of the other species. And that's so typical of fungi. There's hidden diversity everywhere we look, and that is one of the really neat ones here. We can see it all around us, and it's hidden in plain sight. So today we're looking for a lichen that can grow in a graveyard. This is Peltidra didactyla, and that's its species name, but it also has a common name, and that common name is dog lichen. The reason it's called dog lichen is because they actually resemble dog's teeth. Now, in the Middle Ages, the doctrine of signatures suggested that if a plant or a herb actually resembled a part of the body, what it meant was it might also be a cure for some ailment associated with that part of the body. Now, because of that, the dog lichen was used to treat rabies. So there are about 90 species of Peltidura in the world. It's a foliose lichen. Now, foliose really just means leaf-like, and the underside has these amazing rhizines. Now, these rhizines, they're not quite like roots, but they're very root-like. They don't draw up nutrients. They're actually simply there for clinging on. One of the distinctive features about Peltidura is it changes colour when it's actually dry. So often you see it in bright sunny dry days as being a much paler colour than when it's damp and the air is moist and then they become much darker. There's something really special about Peltidra. 
is because it can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. What this wonderful lichen does in fixing nitrogen is really important because not many organisms can do it and it's an essential nutrient. Once that lichen gets eaten or dies and decomposes, that nitrogen is available directly in the environment for other creatures to access. So if you find this lichen in your lawn, don't panic. It's there filling a niche and it's perfect because it means you've got clean, really nice air. I'm Christine and I am here in the heart of the residential area of Edinburgh. So let me introduce you to a dear friend of mine, Lecanora muralis, or as we lovingly like to call it, the chewing gum lichen, because you can see the resemblance. It looks just like the chewing gum. But this little fella is actually the toughest lichen on the streets of Edinburgh. And you can find it on all sorts of man-made surfaces, concrete, tarmac, tile, right outside your doorstep, and even right here on this pavement where we walk all over it day by day. So how can you recognize it next time you look down? Well, it will be pale, dirty, yellow-green color, and it will have a bit of the lichen body all around it, the fellows, so you will see the frilly edge. But the main character are its fruits, and they will look exactly like this. Here we are at Warriston Cycle Track, one of Edinburgh's many cycle tracks, and we're looking at an example of the lichen genus Lepraria, sometimes also known as the dust lichen or powder lichen. There are around 22 species of Lepraria in the UK, and they vary in colour from white through grey, blue-grey, green, and even to yellowish. Lepraria species may occur on bark, lignum, rock, soil, mosses and man-made substances such as brick and concrete. To identify the Lepraria species, because of their simple construction with few morphological characters to use, that is colour, shape, the species are difficult to tell apart and often chemistry of the species must be used to differentiate them. My particular interest is in lichen chemistry and for this reason I find the genus Lepraria a fascinating genus. This is my favourite lichen, it's called Usnea and its common name is Old Man's Beard. Usnea grow on trees, as you can see here, and they look like leafless shrubs um, or tassels that hang from a tree and attach at one point. They're greyish green and they're the same colour all the way around and a distinguishing feature is that the central cord is stretchy. This lichen is very sensitive to air pollution and in the 1970s, when industrial pollution in Edinburgh was at its highest, there was no usnea in Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh at all. And now usnea can be found in many places in the gardens and this means it's a very good indicator of clean air. So what have we got here? It's We've got a Xanthoria parietina, haven't we? Yeah. This one really likes to grow in, in nutrient-enriched places, doesn't it? On yeah. trees and rocks and yeah. walls, just like at the coast yeah. here. And it really likes it at the coast, doesn't it? Because of all the, yeah. the nutrients coming from the sea spray mm -hmm. that's coming up over the, the rocks all the time. What sort of things do we need to look for if we wanted to find that, that lichen? What the, are the special features? The colour. The shape, that's an oval shape with a sticky outy bit. And oh, if you yeah. look closely, there's these suction cups. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Can you show me where the suction cups are? Here, down yeah. there. Almost everywhere in the lichen. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. And I can see what you mean about the edges of it being sort of sticking out. You could almost get your nail underneath the edges there, couldn't you? Yeah. So Simon, what what's the superpower that this a lichen has got? It's sunscreen, so it's in a really sunny place, so it has to make the sun sc sunscreen, that's where the colour comes from. So if it wasn't in in the sun, I think it was in the shade, it wouldn't have this colour. Oh wow, okay. Hey, why not let's make like a lichen, let's catch some sun rays. You up for it? Yeah. Great. Nice. Oh, yeah. These extraordinary organisms often go completely unnoticed as we go about our daily lives and yet they play a vital role in maintaining healthy environments. 
Lichens provide an essential source of food and shelter for a whole range of animals from small to big, from caterpillars, spiders, right through to caribou and reindeer. They can also help us monitor environmental changes such as air quality and climate change. With approximately 28,000 named species in the world, lichens make an important contribution to global biodiversity, helping to build resilience into natural systems. However, as we've seen, lichens can be found right here, all around us, every day. So next time you step outside, why not take a closer look and see what lichens you can find and let us know on hashtag MyUrbanLichen.